60 hey, seconds. Yeah, yeah, Mavis. Uh, can, you, can you give me a mic check, please? Uh, it looks all right to me. Everything's plugged in. Is that what you want? I'm talking to the oh, mic. Oh, no. Excuse me. Here, there's my phone. Playing by yourself. Well, how fortunate for us. Apparently, there's nothing. Uh, yeah, all right. Great. Got it. 30 seconds. Your buzzer is the letter B, as in brick a brack. I think that 20 seconds. Just keep screwing black lights into all the sockets. I'll keep taking them out. That's 20. Let's go. All right, listen up. Uh, as soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you have to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. You got that? 10 seconds. Yes. All right, now. Good luck. Yeah. Eight. Remember? Seven. All right, we're going. Lose the desktop. Four. Go to black. Three. Rolster available in gray, tan, black, and red clay. Genuine imitation brush, leather hat, fringe vest, and couch spurs available separately. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Yeah, welcome to You Don't Know Jack TV, my friend. Just me and you tonight, how nice for us. What do you say you squeeze in nice and close? We'll take the phone off the hook. Maybe I'll even rub your feet later. Hey, you're playing by yourself this time. All right, make the most of what you got. That's what I always say. All right, here we go. All right. Question one is taped before a live studio audience. This one's called, That Ain't Lava. We're playing for $3,000 this time. Okay, did you ever have a lava lamp? Come on, come on! You could sit there and stare at it for hours. Yeah. Well, if you had a lavalier lamp, what trippy thing would you most appropriately do with it? Set it on fire. A lavalier microphone is that little mic that gets clipped to your lapel or hung around your neck. <laughs> Tonight, news at 11 is... Whoa, that's really trippy. Cut! Cut! Time to pick a category. For your viewing pleasure, not counting Fox, that is. You get it right, I'm giving you $1,000. Okay, everybody knows that the three major networks are ABC, NBC, and CBS. But, do you know what they stand for? What is the only word you'll find in each of the names of the networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC? And in case seeing the question is any help to you, company? Well, isn't this sweet? The American Broadcasting Company, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and the National Broadcasting Company all have the same middle name. <laughs> now, now, if anybody can tell me what the hell a peacock and a big old eye have to do with anything, I'll buy them a TV dinner. Category, please. This is question three. For your enjoyment, she's too sexy. Fire her. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Don't you just love reunion episodes? I know I sure do. Okay, imagine this. On a special reunion episode of the Beverly Hillbillies, Ellie Mae's long-lost sister, Annie Mae, returns from Japan. What would you... Anime is another term for Japanimation. It's a very distinct Japanese style of animation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and believe you me, anime would be the most three-dimensional, two-dimensional character ever. Give me a category. Hey. Here we have, don't try this at home or you'll have to leave. $3,000 for this one. Uh Oh, looks like another show's producers have crossed the line again, except this time it's not with the FCC, it's with Immigration and Naturalization Services. Since it has a premise which could get someone kicked out of the country, which series would most likely receive I I Married Dora. It's this 1980s show about a single father who illegally marries his Latin American housekeeper to save her from deportation. <laughs> Gee, what a courageous act. A guy marries a woman to get free laundry. The premise men behaving badly could only dream about. All right, pick a category. All right. 
right, give it up for I'm not a doctor, but I smell like one on TV. 1,000 bucks if you get it. So if you've ever wanted to smell like a hospital, here's your chance. Introducing a new fragrance by that alluring doctor, Ben Casey. Based on the opening line of the hospital drama, what made-up cologne name would complete this commercial tagline? Man, woman, birth, death. Survey says... Here's the one the winners pick. The final word in the opening of Ben Casey is infinity, and you can smell it for blocks. Throw me a category. Well, I hope you're all rested up, because you're about to take on a dis or dat. This dis or dat's category name is Plotlines as old as yesterday's news. Now, I'm going to read off seven names, and for each one, I want you to tell me if the character is married to an intrepid female reporter or not. All right, if you already know how to play, I'm just going to put 30 seconds on the clock then. It's showtime. Jason from Growing Pains, wife of reporter. <laughs> Steven from Family Ties. Major Dad. George, the, the guy from Webster. The greatest American hero. Hayden Fox, the coach. Last one, Clark from Lois. Ain't got no more. You got five out of seven. Are you happy with that? Let's look at your score. Hey, take what you can get. Let's move ahead. Time to pick a category. Got him out of Savory. I love you, question seven. Coming at you. What did you mean by that? I got $2,000 says you don't know this one. Okay, for this one, you have to pretend you're really stupid. Say you tune into each of the following sitcoms for the first time and hear these characters' famous catchphrases. Which character might you think works for NASA's mission control? Peg Bundy for Married with... Good old Ralphie boy frequently threatens to send his wife Alice flying into space when he says, To the moon, Alice! <laughs> So, you might think that Ralph works for Mission Control, and if you're that stupid, you probably also think that Jackie Gleason is just a cheap imitation of that amazing actor, Fred Flintstone. All right, I need a category. Shake hands with bacon, eggs, and man cakes. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. Okay, suppose it's breakfast time, so you head out for something to eat. You're so tired that instead of the IHOP, you accidentally walk into the IHP for breakfast. What's on the menu? IHP stands for the Individual Honors Program on that show, Head of the Class. <laughs> um, excuse me, waitress, can you tell me what's in Arvid? Uh, it's kind of like an omelet, except it's got glasses and a pocket protector. Category, please. Well, what do we have here? Who needs love when you can just watch TV? You get it right, you get 2K. Hey, you remember that made-for-TV movie, Goddess of Love? Yeah, well, do your best. Considering who played Venus in the TV movie, Goddess of Love, which of these... The Goddess of Love in the TV movie of the same name is played by Vanna White. So, one might think, nay, hope, that Pat Sajak would play the King of the Gods. <laughs> Yeah, I always thought that Pat Sajak had a weird power. It's almost as if he's in charge of some sort of wheel of fortune or something. Give me a category. The category, sharing the laughter and love with damn near anyone. 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. Put your head between your knees because we're going down. Suppose Maggie on Growing Pains divorced Jason, married the fall guy, then left him and married Ward on Leave it to Beaver. If she kept the surnames in order, who would she be? Maggie Seaver, Seaver, Clavin, Maggie Seaver, Beaver, Cleaver, Maggie Seaver, Cleaver, Seavers, or Maggie... In order, the Growing Pains family name is Seaver. The fall guy is called Seavers, and Ward is a Cleaver, giving a Seaver, Seavers, Cleaver. <laughs> Which means her show would be Growing Guy Pains Beaver. That's the end of round one. Don't touch that dial because we're going right into round two. Don't forget. All right. I believe this one is called Give Me Some Skin. How does $4,000 grab you? See if you can wrap your skull around this. 
Which of these characters would not set off the metal detector at the airport? Michael Knight, Tweaky, David Banner, or Steve Austin? David Banner, or the Incredible Hulk, is not a machine or a rebuilt human being. He's just a regular guy who gets large and green when he gets pissed. <laughs> Excuse me, but those are my peanuts. Okay, you can have them. Throw me a category. May I introduce, why did God make so many sick people? This one can get you $6,000. Okay, you know that show St. Elsewhere, right? Well, say St. Elsewhere is overwhelmed with patients and the staff prays to God for help. If God sends the patron saint of the TV industry to assist, what will audiences see on the show? The patron saint of the television industry is St. Gabriel. <laughs> Man, he must have really pissed somebody off because he used to get those cool diplomatic jobs like telling Mary about being pregnant with Jesus, but these days he's just a PR lackey who's got to answer for that whole Urkel thing. Time to pick a candy. The category is 20-something angst for 200, Alex. How does $2,000 sound? Okay, suppose the folks at NBC send the Friends gang to appear over on Jeopardy. Considering the characters' occupations on the show Friends, which of these Jeopardy categories would not give one of them an advantage? Digging for bones, in the kitchen, thespians, or swimming safety? None of the Friends is a lifeguard. <laughs> But I wouldn't mind watching Rachel take a dip. Now that would be a daily double. What? Oh, um, what is that would be a daily double? All right, I need a category. Hey, stress cut with lime sore. It's time for a bigger Let's see if you can make some sense out of this gibberish category. How to pleasure yourself. Let's see how much of $10,000 you can win on this gibberish question. Now, as soon as you know the answer, you buzz in and start typing, because I'm going to take away some of that cash every second and a half. All right, listen up. I want you to tell me what phrase rhymes with this. Rub thick nerve, bliss the ounce spent. And never mind that punctuation. First clue. Go for it. Type in your answer. Yep, PSAs are a great thing. I mean, my mom could tell me that joining a gang was wrong like a zillion times, but it was only the sage-like wisdom of Ricky Schroeder that made me see the light. Category, please. Let's take a look at Never Trust a Man with a Donkey. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. So you've seen that movie Romancing the Stone, right, where the guys are running all over Colombia looking for a big jewel, right? Well, suppose famous Colombian commercial pitchman Juan Valdez is cast in a sequel. Considering the product he pushes, what might... Juan Valdez is the guy whose inviting smile and friendly wave have urged millions to run out and buy some Colombian coffee. <laughs> And he's always with that damn donkey. Wait a minute. Always smiling and always with a donkey. Yeah. Give me a category. Open wide and get ready for imaginary friends and men in funny suits. You want 6,000 bucks? Give me your right answer. Flex those fingers. Here it comes. Considering the special ingredient in Drew Carey's Buzz Beer, Drew Carey put coffee in his home brew, a move so bold for a taste so bold that another company stole it. <laughs> and of course, you remember Juan Valdez, right? He was the star of Romancing the Bean. Throw me a... Today's specialties include, I got something for you. Heads up, this one's going to be 6,000 bucks. Hey, do you remember that 1977 made-for-TV movie, Something for Joey? What is that, Something for Joey? Up. Something for Joey is about Penn State running back John Capaletti, who gives his Heisman Trophy to his sick little brother.
Yeah, I remember watching that with my older brother when I was little. He turned to me and he said, You know what, Schmitty? If I ever get rich and famous, I'm not giving you a damn thing. I hate him. All right, pick a category. And our special guest tonight, one small step for man's best friend. If you know this one, you're getting 4,000 bucks. Hey, you know how sometimes networks have characters from one of their shows show up in another one? You know, just for fun. Well, suppose during the broadcast of his historic moonwalk, Neil Armstrong came across Moondoggy. What show would have been cross- Moondoggy is Gidget's boyfriend on Gidget. You know, that grooviest of surfer dudes. <laughs> Houston, we have found Moondoggy. Dude, this sea of tranquility don't have any waves. Time to... This category is known as, there's Pepsi all over these seats. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. Ah, now come on, this TV advertising thing has gone way too far. Let's say they've even started sponsoring the studio audience. Based on the audience's famous nickname, which company would most likely sponsor the audience of the kids? The audience at the Howdy Doody show is called the Peanut Gallery. Perfect title for a planner's peanuts ad campaign. <laughs> What time is it, kids? It's Platter's Peanuts and Platter's Package, not assortment, howdy duty time! Alright, I need a category. Let's have a big warm welcome for What Would We Do, Baby, Without Guest Stars. 4K coming your way for a right answer. Uh-oh, that ne'er-do-well alcoholic Uncle Ned from Family Ties has gotten into the vanilla extract again. Considering the actor who portrayed Uncle Ned on Family Ties, what might he say when Alex finds him in the pantry? Tom Hanks, a.k.a. Forrest Gump, riveted audiences as the alcoholic Uncle Ned on Family Ties. <laughs> An earlier version of the script has Alex finding out that Uncle Ned is a cross-dresser living in a hotel for women. Category, please. Oh, well, someone's been attacked before. Let's see how much you've learned. Here's your clue. Three naughty boys. Now, play nice, or it's no TV for a week. Good luck. exciting game. It was a real thrill. You were the best player we've had by far. Now do me a favor, will you? Look to your left, now look to your right, now repeat after me. You don't know Jack! Nice work, people. Congratulate yourselves. We pulled off another one. Hey, Raul, can we go home or are we playing another one of these? Alright, player, number one on the high scoreboard. See